Hello everyone, so welcome to the second video lecture under Child and Adolescent Learners and Learning Principles. So if you may have noticed, the entire video lecture presented to you before is actually Unit 1 of your course. And this is basically Lesson 1 of Unit 2, alright? So we will be uh, delving on understanding human growth and development this time. And you will see later on much more of how different growth is from development and vice versa. But uh, before we get started, let us look into what Robert John Meehan said. And accordingly, he stated that measuring human growth and development is not like measuring the reproduction of a single model on an assembly line. It is a complex system of helping to figure out where a learner is and how to help them get where they are going. So you just try to imagine like uh, you are stuck in a puzzle, particularly a maze. Well, before you could take the exit successfully, you have to study uh, the, uh, the possible whereabouts where you could take initially, okay, from the very start so that you could make it there outrightly or correctly. So it's kind of uh, putting an object in the maze and considering that that object is actually a learner. Or perhaps before you even started with the puzzle, there already was the object there. Or there was already the learner in a particular part of the maze. So you consider that um, that particular learner needs your assistance or needs uh, a certain phase of growth or perhaps a development in order for him or her to figure out how he's gonna make it until he takes the exit road or the exit uh, route successfully. All right, so that is what Robert Jan Meehan is telling. On, on the perspectives of teachers, therefore, we, we may not necessarily look um, so advanced uh, of the possible end of a learner, but uh, we have to first gauge or measure possibly what the learner is already able to do at that moment that uh, he or she is under your care. And uh, from that very period, you, you already try to assess or to evaluate any possibilities along the way. And then uh, from there, from that point in time, you can actually gradually uh, assist all right, the learner to where he or she is leading. All right? So where is the learner headed to? It's like asking Kovadis, where is this person supposed to end? All right? And your role as a teacher is to be a help to bring that learner to that particular space or to that particular end, all right? So let's get to see what growth is and what development. Well, why is there a need to uh, orient you or to, uh, how do you call this, inform you about uh, the difference of the two? You know, because many people would usually interchange, all right, uh, these two terms. And most often than not, people would uh, sound it as if they are synonymous when they are actually not, all right? The meanings of these two words are in fact different, okay? So we'll get to see how each differs from each other as we go through. But basically, growth refers to a physical uh, increase in uh, some quantity over time. So what are uh, examples? by which we can measure growth, you know, because uh, this pertains to physical changes, all right? But the time has actually, uh, how do you call this, a contribution to how uh, these changes may occur. So again, inclusions could actually be in terms of your height. Okay, let's say for example, uh, you grew um, an inch perhaps or a centimeter, from time to time, then that's actually growth. And let's say, for example, you gained weight, all right, uh, from after months of quarantine or perhaps, yeah, during the, the lockdowns, you gained weight. And this is actually growth in particular. And of course, some other body proportions. 
uh, particularly those that refer to your uh, general physical outlook or appearance. Anything that concerns that is actually growth. All right. So these are things you initially have to remember if you try to differ the two. All right. But uh, let's try to look into what um, theorists under psychology would tell when it comes to growth. So we have here um, Elizabeth Herlock who defined growth as change in size. So look at that. Like I have said earlier, it could be with your body proportion, in your weight, in your height. All right? So it could be the disappearance of some old features and the acquisition of new ones. So growth, therefore, would actually um, open to you the idea of change. You know, because there could be uh, the disappearance of, of something that you, you had earlier in your years, which slowly vanishes as you grow old or as you gain age. All right. So growth, therefore, refers to structural and physiological changes. Okay. Remember that according to Crow and Crow 1962. Thus, uh, growth refers to an increase in physical size of uh, the whole any of its parts and it can actually be measured so there is a quantitative measure when it comes to growth you can measure it in size all right so what else um in britannica encyclopedia growth is defined as an increase in size look at the consistency all right there is change in size according to herlock and here comes according to encyclopedia britannica the increase in size or the amount of an entity all right so it means growth involves all these structural and physi physiological changes that take place within individual during the process of maturity or as you mature so people might actually get um, amazed how how some all right in fact not really some but how people would uh, surprise uh, others when they grow they used to be thin slim when they were young but when they were old they would have had muscled up all right or vice versa there were those who were really fat when they were young and then when they grew up because of maturity because of other factors around they tend to have shown uh, a really body conscious figure perhaps society would also have uh, an interference to why it happens all right but of course definitely part of maturity is uh we being conscious as well of our outlook especially to us appearance or outlook really matters whether we like it or not all right and another here is gale encyclopedia which defined growth as uh the increase in the size of birth definitely you don't stay as the babe you were when you were still uh, fresh from the womb of your mom. All right. You didn't stay that way for so long, but you were actually growing up and that's growth. All right. Now we'll look into development on the other hand. All right. So this refers to the qualitative changes in the organism as a whole. Look at that. I, I, I placed an emphasis on the quantitative measure when it comes to growth a while ago. You can have a centimeter, all right, or a meter or something to that effect that would uh, quantify the amount of change in size. But here, it's qualitative in nature. Development is qualitative. So it is continuous process through which physical emotional and intellectual changes occur so this does not only focus on physical change but it could actually be more of the emotional and intellectual changes occurring and uh, if you were to look at it it is actually wider in scope and more comprehensive than that of growth and did you know that development can actually happen without growth well, according to Crow and Crow 1965, development is concerned with growth as well as those changes in behavior. 
which result from an environmental situation. So there are actually factors already that would uh, add up to how someone or to why someone is developing that way. So development, therefore, is a process of change in growth. All right. Look at that. It's a process of change in growth and capability over time due to function of both maturation and interaction with environment. It is continuous and gradual when it comes to process, according to B.F. Skinner. So always remember that uh, development is qualitative in nature and it's more comprehensive. It could already be about, uh, let's say for example, why is it that um, there are people who, even if they are of same age, would think differently. All right, why is it that we tend to label others like, uh, you're so mature at your age, or perhaps we're just of same age, but you seem to be wiser than I am. Or it could be like, I am far older than you are, but you think as if you have gained much experiences than I, I had. Things like that, you know, because, um, Development actually, uh, how do you call this, embraces, all right, contributions coming from environmental exposure, uh, intellectual trainings, or many different interactions for that matter. And these are actually significant to how a person develops. Or why is it that um, there are those people who, even if they were deprived in life, would tend to be more... Uh, how do you call this? Resilient when it comes to situations. These are things you have to look into. And these all tell about development. There are factors behind that would have caused or that actually uh, cause someone to be that way. So that's development. So here is a comparison of growth and development. Well, uh, here is actually just a list of all that you get to see okay let's let's do it one by one so if growth is particularly on physiological changes all right development on the other hand is actually on overall all right change in an individual it involves change in an orderly and coherent type onwards the goal of maturity and again growth is quantitative in respect and the uh, development uh, changes in the quality along with uh, qualitative aspect. Sorry, that should be qualitative. Please do some editing. And uh, growth does not continue throughout life. There are actually uh, stages in our lives when our growth would just naturally stop. All right? You, you see, there would be people who would say, uh, you, you have never grown already. You, you, you seem to be like that when it comes to your height since then. And uh, they would say, well, this is my body built. But truth is, uh, they are actually growing in some ways. But definitely in due time, there's that standard time. Well, this is actually not specific or true to anybody because uh, we can change in our time as to when our growth would naturally uh, stop, all right? So that's it. While development continues throughout life, we can actually uh, develop when we are already uh, 60s. That's probably the reason why some people would uh, embrace um, life beginning at 40 because others would have wasted some of their time during their early 30s or the past years on, on some things that are not really vital or important or significant to their development, but uh, have only realized that towards uh, the middle crisis level of uh, life. And so development continues throughout life, all right? And growth stops after maturation. You know, adoles adolescent period would actually be most of the time when we discover our growth uh, visibly coming out and showing up 
while development is progressive all right again it continues and uh, what could be the reason for growth well it could be due to multiplication of cells well something is happening inside our genes that is the reason why or inside our cells and uh, development on the other hand occurs due to both maturation and interaction with the environment very importantly all right so if growth is happening due to reasons that are actually inside of us all right particularly in our cells in our very atoms then development is already outwardly affected all right so one is uh, internally affected that's growth the other one is externally affected because of exposure to environment all right so therefore growth is cellular while development is organizational it depends on uh, who you go with where are you exposed to uh, where do you frequently go uh, whom do you frequently share most of your time with how are you learning with people so that's development who's your circle okay and growth would be one part of the developmental process it's just one part but the development is actually wider and comprehensive meaning to say there's just too much that contributes to why a person develops to how he or she is developing all right so growth may be referred to describe the changes in particular aspects of the body and behavior of the organism it may be referred all right but actually development describes the changes in the organism as a whole so growth is just but a piece of a cake or i mean an icing of the cake when we say ah this person is actually big and uh, because of uh, the body size that he has right now he seemed to be like this in terms of his attitude with people and growth could just be just could just be one aspect we can attribute to why he is behaving like that but in here for development it actually describes the changes in the organism as a whole so we can associate it with perhaps uh, the kind of family upbringing that he was raised into that's the reason why we could tell ah this person must be um, god-fearing ah, this person must be respectful humble and things like that all right so we can associate behavior as a whole to the particular development that might have happened or that might have contributed to the individual as a whole all right and another would be growth would refer to changes produced uh, as subjects of measurements again they are quantifiable meaning they are measurable all right and observable in nature while again development is qualitative they could actually not be measured directly it would be very difficult all right so how are they how is rather development uh, being measured they are assessed through keen observation of behavior in different situations their needs therefore um how do you call this an eye to look into deeper details when we say that this person has actually developed this much or this is small all right so you just don't uh, judge on the surface and tell ah this is the reason no there should be a deeper way of uh, looking into factors when we say that the development of our part a particular person is this low or this high and last for growth would be it may or may not bring development but development on the other hand is possible without growth you may not grow physically that's the idea but you can actually develop while not growing physically there is something happening in you because of your uh, being a social animal or because of you breathing with or coexisting with another person in your space there is still development happening even if you don't grow so look at uh, who could be good examples of this mahal and mura 
uh, by nature are physiologically deprived of uh, growing up you know because they have uh, how do you call this deficiencies growth deficiencies but uh, were they not developing of course not they were actually developing as people as social uh, how do you call this uh, icons you know because they have actually established their personality in showbiz in show business and they were actually developing all right so that's the idea to clarify why growth may or may not bring development vis-a-vis -vis it's possible to develop without growth okay so uh, okay to make it clearer for may or may not bring development we can be stuck growing in age but not actually uh, acquiring okay acquiring so much of the wisdom or the learnings you know because we, we just don't mind but we can grow in in size we can grow in shape that's the idea all right so all right so here are developmental domains they are divided into th into three and before we, we deal with that, let us uh, first see why human development comprises of three domains. All right, so in particular, you see their physical and psychomotor domain, cognitive domain, and social emotional domain. And if you, if you will observe soon, each domain, though unique in its own, has a lot of overlap with all other domains, meaning to say, there could be something they would uh, contribute to each other, all right? Learning these principles is important to you as anything related to human development can be traced back to these three realms, okay? We could associate development through these three or by tracing back these three. So, let's start off with physical and psychomotor domain. So, the focus of uh, physical development is on the biological changes that occur in the body and the brain. It relates to gross motor, fine motor, and bilater bilateral coordination including spatial awareness. It also includes examination of changes in the sensory systems, the control over our bodies, our body image, our body proportions, and even our health and nutrition. So remember that we when we when we were still kids, uh, or even when we were still fetus in the womb of our mothers, uh, developmental changes have already actually been happening in our brain and even in our body, such as the connection of uh, uh, neurons in our brain and even how our body movements were as early as at that time. More so when we were already growing up, we were uh, trying to have control over our movement. That's already on the psychomotor domain. Uh, we were already trying to move objects, all right, or to change our position at least uh, gradually. And these are all but uh, the milestones we had when we were still young. But uh, as we were actually growing up, things would, uh, would have changed, all right? We, we were already able to grasp and take hold of the things that uh, before we were just moving because we could not have yet a grasp of them, all right? So these uh, are but few examples of uh, how development is in the phys physical and psychomotor domain. What about in the cognitive domain? So here, there are already changes happening in our thinking ability, all right? So we make sense already of the world. We already recognize sounds and we become, uh, how do you call this, uh, trained that uh, whenever we hear a particular sound, uh, this is a sound coming from the dog, uh, this is a sound coming from the cow, uh, this is a sound that the birds make, things like that. And eventually and gradually as we also age or as we are exposed to many experiences in our environment, 
uh, there already would be more or a clearer image of uh, people around us or even happenings around us. We become particular about them and uh, it starts forming a habit in our mind that uh, this actually is a representation of this or that. All right, Because consciousness, memory, and intelligence already starts uh, developing at that certain period of time. And more so, if uh, our environment is just that rich and we are so involved and we are so exposed to many experiences that help all right, in our brain development, in our cognitive development, then we could do more such as uh, problem solving and our language even actually becomes uh, more advanced when it comes to development. All right. What about social emotional domain? So here, maturity centered, uh, I mean, maturity is centered, all right, on the individual's relation to others. So this is a concerning relationship. What does that include? Well, changes in processes related to our affective or our emotional world such as our self-esteem, our love to others, to ourselves, our temperament, our personality, our sense of morality, and even our interactions with relationship to other people. So basically, it boils down to how we relate, all right? our relationship. And uh, here, uh, in this domain, we get to discover already our ability to love ourselves, before we could love others and um, we also get to know our temperament like uh, how how much could we control our emotions over something over a circumstance over a problem over uh, a victory over a success and what could be our personality types are we the jolly persons are we the serious types are we the um, the intelligent ones uh, the are we the um, how do you call this those who would exclude themselves, are we the inferior? How do you call that already, that term? Uh, when you tend to be, uh, how do you call this? Uh, you are this certain type of personality. You know, my memory is failing me right now. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, when you tend to be so outspoken to people, when you tend to speak so much, you are actually extrovert, that's the term. All right, it could be uh, that's a personality type. It may not necessarily be boasting, but uh, personality types would mean if you are extrovert, then you could freely speak with people. You are outspoken. You can you can talk or converse, but the introvert ones would tend to be shy or compose themselves just silently because uh, they just have a small circle to share and to openly. Uh, uh, talk their ideas with all right but there are many personality types of course and our sense of morality is also here under this domain what is right to you may not be right to others what is good to you may not always be good to others so it always depends on our rearing our upbringing and even our values and these actually again all right affect development now, here are approaches to human development. It, this is actually called a lifespan approach. Let's try to study uh, the perception of this student on human development. So the student says, as a psychology student, I recognize that although it is easiest right, to see that people develop a great deal physically in childhood, I also recognize that we develop in many ways all throughout life. True enough. All right, the realization of uh, this psychology student actually recognizes the fact about development that is actually throughout right, its lifetime. Meaning to say, while there are so many aspects of our development that we can trace back when you were still young, of course, there are, all right, uh, yet to be discovered parts of our development and actually there are still more to discover all right 
So his approach emphasizes developmental change throughout adulthood as well as childhood. He has learned that the lifespan theory of development describes the way that development actually takes place. So that is actually what the learner or the student in here uh, emphasized and learned. So since it is central to lifespan approach, the development occurs throughout life. The reason why it's called lifespan, it's continuing. All right. So there is a continuum that happens from childhood to adulthood. All right. So this perspective should be thought of having the following characteristics that clearly delineate it from traditional perspective. Uh, what could it be? Well, development is multidimensional. When you say multidimensional, there are actually like different parts of it, such as uh, the biological aspect, the cognitive, the social emotional dimensions. So even within a dimension such as intelligence, there are many components such as abstract intelligence, nonverbal intelligence, social intelligence, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, all right, musical intelligence, and so many others. Uh, meaning to say, while you could say that someone is developing um, cognitively when it comes to his or her intelligence, there are still subparts of it. Meaning to say, it's multidimensional. There are different facets that you have to see to be particular. Okay. What about development being lifelong? In the lifespan perspective, early adulthood is not the end point of development. No way. Rather, no age period dominates development, all right? So we don't say, my development has been this much when I was young because development actually happens uh, in any part of your growing up or I mean of your aging or yes. There's no such point in life that would say it was actually dominating your development, okay? So here is another, development is plastic. So a key developmental research agenda is the search for plasticity and its constraints. What, by the way, is plasticity? Plasticity is actually uh, our adaptability, our brain's natural capacity for change or to adapt with change. For example, uh, can intellectual skills still be improved through education for individuals in their 70s or 80s? Or might these intellectual skills be fixed by the time people are in their 30s so that further improvement is impossible? In a research study, the reasoning abilities of older adults were improved through restraining. However, developmentalists debate how much plasticity people have at different points in their development. Possibly, we possess less capacity for change when we become old. All right, so possibly uh, there is this word here saying that we possess less capacity for change when we become old. But of course, we are still open to it even at that particular uh, maximum of our age already. We are still able, though of course, lesser capacity. That's according to research. All right, so... The plasticity of our brain, uh, we could imply here, it could be implied here rather, that the plasticity of the brain would actually be more adaptable in our younger ages, all right? But it's never uh, safe or factual to say that it ends already when we are adulting, no. It still happens only on a lesser capacity. Another is developmental development rather being contextual. So the individuals continually respond to and act on context, which include a person's biological makeup, physical environment, cognitive processes, historical context, social context, and cultural context. The contextual view regards individuals as changing beings in a changing world. You know, all these uh, factors mentioned in here, the environment, uh, history, our culture, all these are actually but changing part as well as of your bigger part as an individual. 
and as it is actually changing so the tendency is uh, for individuals to as well change so development therefore is assumed contextual it depends on the situation it depends on where you are it depends on whether your place right now is temporary and then you will be transferring or changing citizenship in a while or after several uh, after a couple of years something like that so our development therefore depends on all these aspects that is the reason why it's called to be contextual development of course involves growth maintenance and regulation all right so the mastery of life often involves conflicts and competition among three goals of human development one is growth another is maintenance and the third is regulation as individuals age into middle and late adulthood the maintenance and regulation of their capacities take center stage away from growth thus for many individuals, the goal is not to seek growth intellectual capacities such as memory or physical capacities such as physical strength, but to maintain those skills or minimize their deterioration. Meaning to say, during our early ages, we already have uh, had much of our chances all right, to acquire any possible chances all right, or opportunities in which we could grow perhaps intellectually and even physically but as we already grow in age we we tend not to really um how do you call this push ourselves so hard gaining more of these but instead to at least maintain all right uh, the existence of this intelligence and strength in our physical bodies and even in our brain and to at least minimize deterioration or the law of uh, disuse in all of these capacities that we were able to gain during the the early years so that's development involving growth maintenance and regulation and here are principles of human development you can read through all these uh, these are actually just kind of uh, a wrap up of everything said and then also these ones you can just read through all these all right and that is all for our how do you call this lesson one of unit two our second video lecture in particular for your insights or realizations and even your learnings that i have to await in the comment section for your rvls after this discussion thank you and have a smart studying